Hi guys, Alexio here, Team Shady Graveler, and I'm here with, uh, yesterday was uh, rest day 8, uh, unfortunately uh, I was so tired from traveling on Sunday, I couldn't um, do the normal updates, so uh, my apologies, I'm following up today, today is Tuesday, uh, what, the first, yeah, is today the first? Yeah, so anyway guys, um, as usual, let's start with the background, um, this picture I took in Germany, I was in Germany, I think in 20... Must have been it was before COVID, so 2019, 2018, around thereabouts. Yeah, so um, that's when I actually bought my Cube uh, road bike. So I was in Germany, uh, somewhere near uh, Munich, and uh, yes, I bought the Cube bike, and um, this was the first spin. I can't remember the name of this lake or sea, but yeah, this was in Germany. It was a nice ride. Uh, so that's about the background. It might change while we are discussing this. Okay, guys. So very quickly, uh, I'll dive into training picks first. I won't go over the Strava, whatever. So this is how training picks looks and we complete the eighth week here. You remember last time we had one missing here. And so you can see the progress 72, 74, 78, 82, 85, 88 and 87. Now I'm going to just dwell a bit on this. So remember this was at the end of week seven and I told you week eight we're going to taper. And the whole point of tapering is to rest the body so that you dump fatigue. That's what they say, dumping fatigue, or like you, you recover. And as you rest and you lose fatigue, your form automatically improves. So look at the form. So from minus 28 to 13. And by the way, this figures I took just after uh the race i told you i'll have on sunday so this is after the race so if i'd taken this snapshot before the race it would not be 87 it probably have been maybe 85 or 84 fatigue would have been much lower and the form would have been much higher but i wanted to take it i want i had wanted to take it as close as monday as possible so that you know we have some consistency but you can see the taper is actually working so we didn't lose fitness okay just one one point but we get to rest so we dropped we dumped a lot of fatigue and you can see uh, the form has improved and that's the much i can say about uh, uh, training picks okay so as you can see the background has changed again oh yeah so this is the Kedong Valley right behind Ngong Hills I've gone for an XC ride here on the mountain bike uh, I'm not sure of the name of this mountain uh, but right here where the picture was taken from that's Ngong Hills behind Ngong Hills so we are looking into the Kedong Valley. Okay, so um, that was training picks. So let's go to Strava. And in Strava, I wanted us to look at our training log. So you can see the training log. Let me move this a bit because I know I can't see it, but I know, uh, sorry, I know that the uh, my face is somewhere here so hold on okay guys so you can see 
this is what we did in week eight. We had a Monday swim, and then we had. Um, I remember I told you I'll just be doing a lot of zone two, uh, then with a few like maybe uh, very brief and quick efforts. So most of these were just it was a hill climb. Okay, there was a group ride on the double loop, zone two. Yeah, can you see I wrote there what? Keeping it zone two. Then I did a hill climb. I like doing the hill climbs in uh, in Zwift. Um, yeah, you go in into the portal, decide on what kind of power you want to hold for the day, and then just go with it. Again, uh, another climb. This was a tough one. This uh, Lagos D Cavadonga is almost as tough of, as Alp do Zwift. And I did a, a small uh, warm up. So you can see, I will always do a small warm up before the main set. And that's just to make sure that, you know, you avoid those injuries. And then Friday, I decided to rest. Remember, we were tapering. And Sunday, we had a race. So Friday, I rested. Saturday, I also rested. This was just a five kilometer bike check uh, spin. So that was not much. So Friday, Saturday, we rested. And then Sunday, we had the race warm up. And then we had our, um, our race. The race went really, really well, guys. Legs didn't complain. Uh, the two climbs we had on the loop. I could power through them each and every time. Uh, so here is the race. And this is the Grand Nairobi race. We got third masters after, uh, and we are behind the two guys who won are tough guys, Kinja and Kamau. So look at the power we managed to hold the weighted average 278, pretty decent. Uh, our average power again, 252 watts pretty decent time was okay 130 so we did five loops of about uh, 12 kilometers each um, for about yeah total of 60 kilometers almost 60 kilometers the third loop I faded uh, I found that tough first loop was okay second loop was okay third loop I faded and I was ahead of a, a really big bunch so they caught up with me and then they dragged me to the end. If I'd managed to hold it, I would have finished behind the second group on the road and in front of the third group that caught up with me. So this was the, it was really good. So here you see, fast, tough, managed to hold this and power. Training coming through, yeah. There you go. Uh, let me move this a bit here. So that's... That's me leading my small group. This is a small this is this group that was in between the two big groups. And then we have um, we have uh, yeah a few more pictures of myself. Uh, that that's the lady who won the women's uh, category. We had some kids. Yeah. Uh, Mount Bunyala ahead, smile. So <laughs> Bunyala is the is the is the climb. So we're gonna look at it. This is one of the um um what 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 do they say? Mm. Abled differently, uh guys. Really, really, really inspiring. Yeah. And um this guy there's a time I was in a race with him and he beat me. You know how you'd feel about that. Yeah. So uh, what else do we have? Kinja. So this is one of the veteran uh, cyclists in Kenya. And he won the, the Masters. Yeah. So he was first and Kamau was second. I think I have a picture of Kamau. Yeah. yeah. Kamau was second. And unfortunately, guys, I had to leave. I would have been on the podium there. I would have been third. But I had to leave because I traveled this evening. Yeah. So come out, Davidson, come out. And Kinja, the Wazewakazi, they are the oldies. The Burundi dramas. Medals look really cool. 
I hope I'll get my the trophies also. And this is uh, Charles Kagimo, he's the only one, I think. Yeah, so that's it. So, guys, I just want to show you something, yeah, here. Uh, this is Grand Nairobi Bike Race 2024. This is Grand Nairobi Bike Race 2022. Look at the power. Okay, it's this was a bit longer, 75 kilometers, so 15 kilometers more. So, 2 hours, 12 minutes. So you could say the effort, I had to hold the effort longer. So definitely the weighted power will come down. But look at the difference, 237. And in 2022, I was training for Cape Epic. This was in November. And November, December, January, February. And in three months, I was going for for Cape Epic and look at the power I could only hold 237 watts yeah and then the following year now this is the year I did Cape Epic when I came back so I came back what Cape Epic is in March and this is again November and in November look 254 I could still hold I I held more power than the previous year this was fitness from Cape Epic still carrying over and one way of gauging your fitness, guys, is look at the amount of effort you put into a similar event. And one way of looking at effort is your heart rate. So look at this. Look at my heart rate uh, in 2023. Like all of it was just tempo. Like I hardly touched threshold. So that shows you how fit, how fit I was. If I look at 2022, look at this. Look at that, 2022. I had one hour in threshold. So that means I was really, really, I was not fit. Meaning I had to really, really dig deep to, to, pro, to produce that result. And then this year, if I look at this year, pretty decent. Uh, just 10 minutes of threshold. The rest was in tempo. And... Uh, weighted average of 278 watts for this effort so that's i would say that's a good uh, uh outing yeah so anyway guys yeah that's it uh wait i want to show you something here uh this is the bunyala road climb yeah so look at this the first loop four 98 watts for 45 seconds yeah the second loop 475 watts 48 seconds the next loop 430 watts so it's, it's going down a bit but still third loop i'm still i can still hold 430 watts without a problem 40 48 seconds fourth loop 410 watts <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm getting tired 55 seconds the fifth loop i pushed 465 watts yeah you can see so from 410 here to 465 watts 44 seconds so the the last loop i did 465 watts and the first loop i did 490 yeah 498 watts okay for a difference of only one second 30 extra watts but yeah it just shows that the training is in the legs yeah and if you look at the, here we go, if you look at the loop, uh, hold on, I see my results, these are my loops. So the fifth loop is not here because we went to the finish. Yeah, but that's, you can see, I tried to hold it, first loop, 42 kilometers, 42 kph, second loop, 41 kph, I really, really held it. Huh? Then third loop. I suffered so 38 that's when i dropped uh fourth loop 37 fifth loop i did a bit better okay so that's it guys there's nothing else i want to say about that yeah um let's see what else did i want to okay guys very quickly i just want to go over the two months of training uh, we did okay 
so we already looked at this yeah so today so we had so i traveled on sunday monday was rest day real real rest day because i was out and then today i've just done uh 50 like a 60 kilometer ride to test the bike i'll talk about that uh shortly okay um uh, this is what i wanted us to look at so here we go two solid months of training so in august you see we had we had 47 hours of training and in september we had 43 hours of training even though we were tapering yeah and if we open august in august we had 1050 kilometers 25 activities so yeah that's almost if you remove the rest days that's almost one activity per day we tried yeah uh, look at all those days in the saddle yeah so this is a thousand and fifty in august and in september we had about 900 so in total over the two months we have done 1950 kilometers of training not not too bad that's a, a pretty pretty good solid uh, training block so guys that's if you want to improve that's what it's gonna take yeah uh, maybe because of work and stuff you might not be able to do that much time and that's where a trainer comes in very important um you you're not gonna improve drastically or as fast without a trainer uh, say what you want to say about it let the experts come and talk about how riding your bike outside is the best yes it is but um to to structure training you need a trainer so if you're watching this and you want to take your your fitness or your training to the next level and you haven't got a trainer get a trainer it's gonna change your life before i got my trainer because of cap epic and before i got my trainer i was in that camp of like i don't need a trainer it's never that serious and i i i still like um subscribe to to sort of that notion like it's never that serious yeah so if you just want to enjoy your riding well and good you don't need a trainer but if you want to be able to ride with the strong bunch and not feel it and not suffer like you need a trainer you, it's it's as i there's no other way of putting it let me, let me put it this way yeah you can cycle and enjoy cycling without having a trainer but having a trainer is going to improve the quality and the enjoyment of your cycling without a doubt and that is if you get a trainer and you use it if you get a trainer and you don't use it then it's not helping you yeah it's like just having a bike and not using it so anyway i've preached enough so guys um very quickly that was uh pretty much uh most of the thing i wanted to say um so i traveled uh on sunday i flew sunday evening monday morning i landed in paris i managed to get uh save some money like maybe 15 20 000 bob on a cheaper ticket so i flew into paris and then took the train to brussels so instead of getting a direct flight on brussels air it was quite expensive um i i, I decided to go with air france so i saved some money before i forget guys i almost didn't get my visa and um 
for many reasons, but mainly because by the so they it's clearly stated on the the visa processing site that they take fifteen working days to process a visa. Granted, I saw that uh, fifteen working days are actually three weeks because one week is five working days, isn't it? But the thing is, by the time I didn't, I could not book an appointment date until I had my UCI license, because there was no point in doing all this and then you are not sure of whether you will get your UCI license or not. Without the UCI license, you cannot come and take part. So I had to wait until I got my UCI license, and immediately I got my UCI license. I booked an appointment for the visa and and that was in july and when i booked the appointment in july the earliest available date was the date i got so there was no way i could have gotten an earlier date yeah and because of that i almost got messed up but it's good to know people and um a gentleman called simon came through for me Simon, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, he's connected. He knows who is who of embassies, I guess. <laughs> and I reached out to him. And he doesn't even live in Kenya. I reached out to him and told him, Simon, hey, I'm in a fix. Can you help? He said, I'll try my best. It might work. It might not work. Let's see. And it worked. So Simon, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Uh, I owe you a beer. Yeah. So, I traveled on, uh, what? I traveled on um, <clears throat> Sunday. Monday I arrived. I rested Monday. Today I went out for a ride. Uh, I think I posted already, posted a video uh, on, um, on, on my Facebook uh, about the bike. So, I got the bike. Do I have, let's see, hold on. Here we go. So, yeah, very quickly. So, these are bikes owned by uh, Mr. Stillart. It's called Jürgen. It's called Jürgen Stillart. Uh, if you look closely, this is on his wall. And this is where I met him. So Jürgen tried to, um, he's been trying to qualify for this gravel event that I've come to. Uh, and that brought him to Kenya. So he was at the Naivasha race. Unfortunately, he never made it. He never qualified. Because uh, he's, he's a young guy, he's an elite. So the competition is, is high. And... When he was in Kenya, I actually didn't meet him. Even in Naivasha, I didn't meet him. Yeah. Uh, but later he reached out because he was trying to figure out something about the results. And we started chatting. And um, yeah, and I told him, hey, I might be coming over. Um, I might need some assistance on the ground. And in terms of logistics, maybe just questions to, to somebody to answer questions. And say, hey, by the way, I live right near where the race is going to end. I can help you, um, you know, like, let's chat. And so here we are. So the bike I'm using is his. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can get a picture of the bike. Uh, sorry, sorry guys. They can get a picture of the bike. So that's okay. Almost, almost, guys, almost, almost. There, this is the bike. So it's a bike that Jürgen put together himself. He bought the frame from China, carbon frame, alloy, alloy wheel, uh, aluminium wheels. DT swims. Guys, if you want what you call bulletproof wheels, go with DT Swiss anytime. I have uh, a set 
of aluminium little swisses on my um, mountain bike never had an issue with them for what like now six seven years uh, so yeah that's the bike uh, he's running a SRAM uh, wireless um, setup on it on them on, on the bike it's taking me a while to get used to but uh, yeah I think I can manage somehow and that's the bike so um, let me let's go back here um, so that's Jürgen showing me his uh, collection that's his loop um, I posted this on Facebook for those guys who are not one not on Facebook or not in the group so just to make sure uh, just get onto Facebook and look for Team Shady Graveler and ask to be added. It's a it's a private group because I just don't want anyone just to whatever. There'll be just too many people who are not even interested in in in, in the content. Yeah. So XTR pedals, brand new. I bought them, installed them, run perfectly. Uh, this was today beautiful beautiful oh so beautiful look i almost fell boom <laughs> yeah because i had I, I was not i was still this was like maybe 10 minutes after i've been on the bike uh and i was trying to do my normal filming with one hand and controlling with the other hand so this was today's ride uh beautiful so i bumped into let me show you guys I bumped into these three. Uh, they're also here for the event. I talked, spoke to only one because they split up after here. But I'm assuming all of them are... The guy I spoke to was from America. He's called Sean. So uh, I'm assuming all of them are from America. Yeah. So I rode with Sean for almost like 30 minutes. Yeah, that's Sean now. Yeah. We got lost together. Yep. Uh, beautiful. And we saw some wildlife in Belgium. Look at that. Those are what? Gazelles, antelopes. I don't know what they call them. I'll have to figure it out. That is interesting. I think this is beetroot. Yeah, it must be beetroot here. Uh, so what else? Yeah, that's shown again. And yeah, we have these signs all over the forest some ducks some geese i think those are geese it was really cool yeah seeing this it's like a, a water a water mill or something the windmill so it's water mill yeah yeah so i'm gonna post this video on facebook and youtube so just look out for it so time out on the bike today yeah i'll post it uh, or i'll make just a video just of the ride that's a bike pretty decent bike yeah decent gravel bike yeah yeah so it's, it's it's a good one could be a bit lighter but yeah but it's okay so i met some two ladies who are here also for that event and they took a picture of me they want they stopped me so that i can take a picture of them then they took a picture of me and the race route goes through the Leuven. <laughs> it goes through the Leuven uh, uh, train uh, station. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, and some just some nice cool shots. <sighs> so Kesselo, Kesselo is where uh, Jürgen lives beautiful anyway okay guys so i think that's it um thanks for your support oh okay this background this was jobag to see 2017 i think 10 days on the mountain bike uh, the race starts in jobag this is in jobag and you end up at the sea after 10 days so guys i think i've covered everything i wanted to to say just a few things
things I want to get off my chest, guys. Guys, we take the sun so for granted in Africa, in Kenya. I'm telling you, I landed Monday morning. I didn't see the sun until maybe 4 p.m. I felt weird. And immediately the sun hit my skin. I, I felt happy. <laughs> and it's so cold. Wow. Gosh, you can see. I had to go and buy this. Because, you know, I shaved my head. So I lose so much heat from my head. So, and Yagan says that around here, they don't turn on the heat until uh, November. <laughs> I can understand, yeah. So, I'm telling you guys, we take the sun in Kenya, in Africa, so for granted. And as I always say, give me a hot day, any day, 50 degree heat, rather than the cold. I, I can't survive in the cold. So, um, yeah, I wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> but otherwise, I guess maybe after two, three days, I'll... I'll sort of like acclimatize and sort of get used to it. Like even on the ride today, it was a bit chilly, but I had a base layer and um, it, it went okay. As long as it doesn't rain, I think uh, I'll be able to handle uh, the ride. Yeah, so, oh, I want to show you this. If you go to the website, um, hold on, uh, here we go. Uh, sorry, here we go. Here, this is this is the the the, the URL UCI Gravel World Series dot com. Yeah, and then click on. Hold on. Sorry, this is for the qualified riders. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait. Okay, here we go. Okay, hold on. Here. No. What am I looking for? What am I lost? Here we go. August. Here we go. Okay, if you this here we go. Gravel Championships Flanders .com en. If you come here you will get a lot of information about the program yeah writer's guide spectator's guide but you'll get information about the course qualification accommodation blah 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 and on this site you'll get this so this is the friday program and this is the saturday program so i'm showing you this because i ride on saturday so you can see at 12 o'clock the elite women start in Halle and then this is my age group 50 to 54 at 12 15 15 minutes after the elite ladies we start then the rest of the guys come after us so that's the saturday program and then on sunday you have the elite men at 12 o'clock uh Jürgen tells me that this yeah, it's going to be a big, uh, there are more entries, the event is going to be bigger. And so they probably televise uh, everything um, live. But of course, it's just going to be the elite ladies that will be followed by the helicopters and the elite men. So don't expect to see me uh, on TV. Although, as I said in another video, uh, I came with all my stuff, so I might... Uh, live stream uh, I'll just buy data I might live stream from my bike so I'll see if I can hook that up okay guys I think that's pretty much it um, let me not make this too long Ooh, last one before I go okay you can you see that lake in the distance guess guys who know Kenya guess which lake that is if you've been on this road before so that lake is lake baringo that's lake baringo 
this is the rift valley so abadea is just here and we are on the road that comes from marigat to cabernet beautiful place to cycle either road or mtb um yeah kenya is a lovely place and guys can you see all this these are the pending videos that i'm yet to do yeah look kept epic i stopped at i think day two or day three i've not done that kick xc of last year i still have to edit that lvt that's the lake victoria tour i'm yet to finish that more abadeas that's bnd strava sigiria i have a, a a video for Sigiria. I have a video for the race at the forest. This is the folder for my gravel stuff. GNBR, I'm working on it. And this is my medal you see in the middle. Guys, again, so many people have reached out uh, with message of support. Thank you so much. You, 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 you don't know what it means to me. And every time someone gives me words of encouragement it just makes me happy and strengthens my resolve to you know um, uh, do as as best as i can i'm not gonna like race all out because i want to enjoy the event uh, but i'm gonna give it my best sorry for making it a bit long thank you very much uh, next update will be after the race or maybe before the race i'll send a message a short message uh till then stay tuned and stay shady cheers guys bye bye